A club or a network for everyone is a club or a network for no one. What's the value that someone in business gets out of a business club? It saves you time. If you surround yourself by people who are in a business, who created nice projects with nice results, 99% that you will do the same. Just do it. Do it smart. What did you mean by do it smart? You really need to do your math and understand how much money you will be able to have and what else you will be able to have. New episode of the Scale Talks. Hi, everyone. We are with Irina Vorobiova today. Hello, Irina. Hi. And we are going to talk about scaling networks, business networks, business clubs, What does it take to make it work? What's the idea behind the business model? What's the idea behind uh, the organization? What's the idea behind the mindset, as usual? But first, who are we talking about? Irina, um, you've been an entrepreneur. You've been a lawyer before being an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't talk about that or not. And you are in charge of the YBC Young Business Club here in Lisbon. Uh, you've been doing that for a few years. You're going to tell us about that. Um, and that's a club where entrepreneurs meet. There are lots of clubs like that uh, in various places in the world. It's actually a global club. And the question is, how do you work on scaling something like that and turning it from just a little group to something that gets structured, organized, with teams that work into it, and at the end of the day, a business that can uh, keep growing? Mm -hmm. So first things first. What's your background? What got you into networking? Why Why is it important to network? Why do you like it? You have a big smile. So <laughs> yeah, why is it? I love it. <laughs> so my story is like this. Um, as I told you, like two minutes ago, uh, I used to be a lawyer. Uh, and uh, for me, it's, I needed to read a lot, to write a lot, to debate. Uh, and I was so bored about this. I don't know. It's, it's not my... My life, um, and I started uh, my own business uh, in um, tourism um, events. Uh, and actually, I decided that um, I miss people with who I can talk about my business, uh, who understand me, who have uh, the same mindset, uh, uh, with who I can brainstorm. You know, and I, I really spent several years uh, searching for the best business club for me uh, to join as a member. So yeah, I lived in Ukraine at the time. I moved to Portugal two years and a half. Originally, I'm from south of Ukraine, but I moved to Kiev, to the capital. Uh, it's better for business always to live in the capital. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I was visiting different business clubs, checking what is the best for me. And I chose Young Business Club, uh, joined, uh, and actually started to, to scale my network. So I used to be a member for a year. I used to be a very active member, that one who created a subclub, uh, because I, at that time, I had... So passionate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at that time, I had uh, several businesses, and one of them was um, event agency what did team buildings and corporate parties, like conferences. So uh, it's HR, human resources field, right? So I created HR subclub, and we did many uh, meetups for the members in Kyiv, Um, like human resources mastermind, we uh, invited some guests, uh, special guests who can share some experience in human resources. So yeah, it was my shortly my way before opening a branch of YBC here. The the point about um, being part of a business network is always very important when you run a business. But there is network and network. There is the the network as in the suppliers, the people who work with you. And there are some people, but not all of them, um, who actually spend time going out and meeting new people to try and, and make new connection. Mm -hmm. What is, and again, that's not the case of everyone. Some of the networks are open to everyone. You can just go, take a seat, um, have a chit chat and not do too much out of it. Some clubs are more exclusive selective. Either way, why should an entrepreneur join uh, a business club in the first place? What's the value that someone in business gets out of a business club? Mm -hmm. um, joining business club, um, actually any business club, it saves you time, but depends on the club, how much they save. So uh, in some clubs, uh, clubs as you said, uh, they select members. 
Uh, and um, if you want to be, for example, in a club where uh, more um, people with startups, uh, you better join there. If you're a more experienced business owner, uh, sure you choose for yourself uh, this kind of club. So, um, so there is a segmentation aspect, and the segmentation brings specific choice, specific profiles, specific targets that match who you want to meet. Absolutely. Um, I know even Amazon business clubs, like uh, um, clubs, uh, what can what were created only for business owners who has Amazon, uh, who have Amazon shops. So yeah, you just choose. Like uh, you, you need to research what kind of business clubs uh, you have in the area where you live, or, or online if you prefer like this, uh, and then you you just decide. I can tell a little bit about uh, why I choose YBC for myself. So um, I knew uh, that uh, they take only business owners who are in who are in a business uh, more than two years. That's an important point because you don't want to be with you know at, at an event and necessarily meet people who are just working on an idea. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and also, these people should have nice experience. I mean, during these two years, you can be a business owner, but open and close businesses. Mm. And that's why uh, in YBC, we ask before we invite somebody to join, if this experience was successful. Sure, we cannot check everything. Like, we're not uh, um, officials, right? Uh, but anyway, it's more or less always possible during the questions in answers understand this. Uh, and then um, um, I liked that uh, they had criteria, age criteria. It's young business club. And according to, um, I don't remember the exact name of this worldwide organization about health, something. So we are young until 45 years old. So you feel really nice with the people who are like uh, very... Uh, um, with nice energy, or they want to create something. So it was the second thing for me. And also, uh, I liked that they choose only um, people with ethical businesses. Uh, for example, I don't know, um, no adult, for example, or like... No, no drugs? Is, yeah, no drugs. Oh, so you can't meet anyone <laughs> who does drugs at the YBC? That's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, yeah, um, you actually y you could, but it's not drugs. It's uh, a CBD. We used to have a member, but it's not drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. they they produce this. Um, when we had a chat about the discussion, you said that one of the big interests of working on your networking expansion, networking skill, was that clubs are creating organic growth. Mm -hmm. And I found the expression pretty interesting. Why is is it something that you consider organic growth? Organic growth, uh, I meant that um, if you surround yourself by people who are in a business, who created uh, nice projects with nice results, 99% that you will do the same. And if you have two people like this, you have less chances to, to do nice results than if you have 100 people around you like this. So it's the point of saying if I'm joining a network that matches me, then people can look like me, feel like me, be aligned, and we can do lots of stuff together and it's going to feel normal? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I gave you the time an example that um, when I used to be uh, in Ukraine, I was thinking only uh, with borders of Ukraine. So my business, in I created business inside of Ukraine and because I was surrounded by business owners who did local businesses. Uh, now I surrounded myself by people who do worldwide businesses, and really I do worldwide projects now. I forgot the name of this um, uh, pickles. Yes, so I t uh, gave you the example uh, actually that if you fresh cucumber and you will be put it in a box or, or in a can with pickles, you will become a pickle. Yeah. So it works the same with the people. Yeah, it makes sense. In the end, it's a question of uh, deciding what you want and getting it. Um, that gets me to my next point and my next question. It's easy to work on growing your network, right? Mm -hmm. But if I want to grow my network as a, an individual, I'm going to go, I'll try to meet people and all that. If tomorrow, and that's getting back to the point of what we talk about in the Scale Talks, if tomorrow I want to build a network as a business, mm -hmm. what are the, the key elements that I need to keep in mind? Mm -hmm. How do I go from personal to scaling? Mm -hmm. 
from personal what to are scaling. the key points yeah i will share just our experience i cannot give advices because we're all different just personal uh, experience yeah so um i decided to move from ukraine uh when the full-scale war started to portugal i had zero networking here right and I was thinking, okay, maybe I need to join a local community or like I was checking uh, before even coming here. Then I understood um, I better create my networking, uh, how to do this. So um, we checked, um, we started to Google how many entrepreneurs uh, approximately Portugal has. For example, uh, we have here an HR status, right? Uh, so uh, for me, it gave understanding that so many entrepreneurs, uh, international entrepreneurs came here and will come. Now the situation changed, but anyway, we still have this status. Uh, and also we did some marketing research. We put some ads, uh, do testing and, and see how many people, business owners will react, how many leads we will have. I talked to, to um, it appeared that I, I had uh, 14 um members from other branches because we have 15 branches world, worldwide they came here as well so i talked with them how they think if it was to open a branch of ybc here so uh we did this homework before deciding to open and then we did our math so for example uh what kind of expenses i will have creating a club how many members i need how fast I need to scale uh, members because we have a plan every month. We need to have minimum this amount of members to support uh, the club to, because expenses can be higher than like mm -hmm. income. I cannot do this. Uh, and for scaling as well. So we created the budget. We did our math. And only after this, we started to do this. So if someone now is listening and they're goal is to build um, a network as a job or as a business more mm -hmm. than a job it means the, the first thing you did was a uh, market study yes absolutely looking at whether there are clients potentially what how many of them yeah. are they interested is there a product market fit yes first point absolutely. then there is another point about doing the math yes making sure that you have the right business model yeah and the third thing what we did uh, we checked uh, competitors for sure and there were any? Uh, yes, yes, some competitors, but they have absolutely different model of networking. So some things uh, you cannot find in Portugal, like we have in YBC. That gets me to another question. Yes. What is? Tell me about business models because that's another point. So market analysis, doing the math, um, budgeting, having a business plan. Okay, but the business plan one of, one of the aspects of a business plan is going to be the business model, which is how do we do it? What is what are the possible business models as far as building a club is concerned? By business model, you mean uh, what kind of product we offer for our members, right? Uh, so um, we offer a very nice uh, networking because we kind of select people. And second, we provide business education. Uh, uh, we um, do this using several tools. The first one, meetups. This uh, second one, um, application for the club members. Now uh, you will start using it s uh, soon as well. Uh, chats uh, and uh, uh, business uh, manager. This kind, it's kind of uh, your personal assistant for the club needs. So that's more um, the, the value proposition. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what you offer. But as far as the business model is concerned, my, my question was more like, if tomorrow I want to build my own business okay. network, I could charge every time ah, I'm creating an event yeah. but then it means I have to finance and I don't have any visibility yeah, yeah. but people don't have to commit which could be an, an yeah, advantage or uh, there is the alternative which is paying a membership and then you don't have to charge every time mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. what what are the options what's working what's not working mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our club has exists eight years. Uh, we have 15 branches. We tried during these eight years uh, different models, actually. Uh, and uh, what works for us, um, membership, uh, because it's kind of, I don't know, when you buy a card in a sport club, uh, the sport club understands that you will uh, visit like this. You know, one month you visit, another month you will not visit, but it's it's really bad for the business. So uh, we decided membership is better for us. But to help members to visit us more often, we created this 
person who uh, who I called like um, business manager. So if even if you're traveling somewhere, you will be I don't know in the U.S. Um, you can ask her, for example, um, I have these Connections. business issue, issues. Can you find me five members with who I can talk? And also we we do like online uh, meetups sometimes, uh, so you you can be in touch with the club. When we prepared the discussion again, you said another thing that I liked. You said um, about how to build things. You said don't don't just do it. Do it smart. Mm, yes. Absolutely. What did you mean by do it smart? Um, actually, I already like, a little bit answered to your question. So uh, you really need to uh, do your math and understand um, how much money uh, you will be able to have and what else you will be able to have. Because some people think that creating business club, I don't know, you can have millions. Believe me, to, to uh, have this as a prof very profitable business, you need to scale it worldwide. It's, it's, uh, it's a challenge, really. Uh, interesting challenge, but anyway, no, n not many people did this. Uh, so um, first of all, you need to understand that for what you do this, for your personal networking uh, or for money. And understanding this, or maybe something else, I don't know. After uh, understanding this, think how to do this and if you're really able to do this and if you're really able to put all your time because you need to be, uh, every business club needs uh, to have a um, face of the club, you know, advocate of the brand. So um, basically employees, they cannot do this. The, if you created the club, you need to be always there. You need to talk with the members. Uh, you, I don't know. Like, I put uh, all my time there. Actually, that's two two interesting points. One, um, the first thing you're saying, and that's that's actually correct. Uh, the the logic that you're using to build a business club works for club period. It mm -hmm. works for an association. It works for charity. It works not just in a business context. Um, if you say the motto here is to push entrepreneurs to meet, then this is the function of the club. This mm -hmm. is the value proposition of the club. But if tomorrow you say, we're going to build a club for people who love dogs, or we're going to create a club for uh, people who want to fight against uh, cancer, mm -hmm. a disease, something, it's still going to be a club. It's mm -hmm. still going to be an organization that needs to get people in. It's still going to be associated with costs. And so if there is a cost structure, there needs to be an income structure, what, whatever. Maybe it's public funding, maybe mm -hmm. it's private funding, maybe it's membership. So everything you're talking about totally applies in different contexts. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You can use the, the same model for another club. You can like uh, Networking generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Networks. Yeah. Absolutely. And the second point you said was you couldn't do that if you were an employee. Um, what's what's so we're touching on the mindset already. Yes. But what's going to be the difference um, if tomorrow someone wants to start a network, let's say more broadly than a club? What would be the difference between doing it as an employee for someone else and doing it for themselves as an entrepreneur? Uh huh. Uh, I built a club for business owners. Uh, and I understand business owners, entrepreneurs, business owners. And that's why I understand uh, what they are looking for, what kind of challenges they have. Uh, employees, th th even if they're trying to understand, uh, they're not in our shoes. So that's why it's kind of difficult. Um, I think that they cannot build, but they can support a business club. So w when I already um, scaled a little bit, um, uh, I wrote processes, what should be done, and like who, sh uh, who can do this. Uh, they can support, but they, from my perspective, it's very difficult for them to build because they don't understand uh, like the mindset. Very specific question. Um, we hear a lot, we, we coach entrepreneurs, so we, we see a lot of entrepreneurs. And a lot, very often, we hear business owners say, oh, my solution is for everyone. Mm -hmm. The potential is huge. Okay. Um, your position is to say you have to use segmentation. Don't be for everyone. Absolutely. I agree with that, but can you explain why? Uh, actually, uh, I even if you will learn marketing, uh, you always will find this. The better you segmentate, the, the more money you will have. If you will uh, create your club for every business owner uh, who's just started, 
who has a small business, who has a big business with uh, the no turnover more than 50 million, it will not work uh, because it will be a mess and uh, you, you, they will not understand. It's even difficult to create a product, what you offer them, it will be a mess. So this Yeah, because one, whoever has 100 people doesn't want to spend time with someone who's just thinking about an idea. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's, that's why we just did our segmentation. Our members, they have employees. Uh, for example, it's necessary. Very few people we, uh, we have in the club who uh, are more consultant, but I understand that they can bring um, a lot of value to the club members. Uh, but anyway, if they don't have employees, they have already different mindset. So a club or a network for everyone is a club or a network for no one. Yes. And you have to make sure that it's actually targeted. Actually, maybe it means that there are less people who are going to be interested because in quantity there's less. Yeah. But if you have 15 people who are very interested instead of 300 who are not, then it's worth it. Absolutely. Next question is how do you organize that? You can't do everything on your own because the amount of time you have personally is limited. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, this network is everywhere. So how do you work on maybe mutualizing things or making sure that people work in silos? One country is one country. Um, some skills might be between different countries. And mm -hmm. how, how does it work? How, because that's a big part of scaling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, I delegate. I have a team. Uh, in total, um, I have um, 10 people who work only for our branch. Uh, five, they work um, remotely, five here locally. And I have head office, people who deliver services like, um, I don't know, marketing or uh, finan finances or um, um, what else, uh, like law department. So I don't need them full time. Uh, I hire them par partly. Let's talk, let's start from the um, uh, team who work for my branch. So I have event manager. Uh, because uh, we organize um, from six to ten meetups per month in our branch and the same in other branches. Uh, I have uh, two business managers. They take care about members. It's, uh, as I mentioned before, kind of best friends of our members. They will remind you about meetups. They will tell you, okay, uh, this guy joined. I think it will be interesting for you to meet him because I know what you're working on. You can do collaboration. And uh, also, as I mentioned before, if you need something, you always can ask and, and they will try to uh, do their best. And also, I have event project manager here locally. Uh, she thinks what kind of um, uh, events we can do, who we can invite as a speaker or special guest, and me. So five people here locally. So that means you're delegating. Yeah. But before being able to delegate, you have to think about what are the functions that you need, yes, absolutely. what are the roles, um, what are the tasks. And based on the tasks, you get the functions and the roles. And so it's, it's something you really have to structure. It's not something you can improvise. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. First, you create products like offer. And then you think uh, what you need to do to deliver this offer. Um, yeah. And also, I have uh, um, four people in um, membership advising department. So the, when you leave um, your phone, uh, you apply to visit the club. Uh, they call you back and ask, okay, you apply to visit us, like, uh, can you tell me what kind of business you have, how many people you have in your team, so, so they so select the by filtering. criteria, yes. Yes, so three people, and one is the head of uh, this team, um, yeah. And I have kind of a uh, uh, supervisor, the guy who is more experienced than me in building communities, um, he is also investor in the club, so ten people in our team. Can you give me an idea of how many people you need to manage, let's say, you have uh, 100 leads every month, okay. so 100 people dropping an email saying, hey, I'm, I'm interested, okay? Um, 100 is going to be, I don't know, maybe 30 people who become uh, uh, members. How many people do you need to manage that kind of flow? It depends on what they do. I will explain how it, work, uh, how it works in our company. So um, we have around 400, 500 leads per month for Lisbon branch. Um, around 25% of them, they, uh, they match the criteria. 
So around 100 leads, uh, they match. Uh, I have three people uh, in a membership advisor, uh, advising department who talk with these uh, people, business owners, um, and they have one-to-ones with them, uh, like minimum 30 minutes with everybody. They explain how we work, they ask some questions uh, to see uh, if uh, um, uh, these people are interested to join, if we can give them value, and if they can give value for the members. And only after this, they invite to uh, visit us physically, to see the members, to feel the vibe. So to do this job, I need three people. So three people help you deal with 400 contacts turning into 100 leads? Yes. And turning into what, maybe 30, 50 new members every month? Uh, depends. Um, it's turning to, let me remember, um, yeah, it's uh, around 10, 12. So okay. s- that's, a, that's a good idea. That's a good number. So three people can manage all that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Number. And the head of these three people, so in total four. Let's talk about mindset. Mm-hmm. So we started already. You cheated, but we started already. Okay. Um, what are the so the the first point I had to to talk about the mindset was what is the difference between an entrepreneur and someone who's not an entrepreneur? And you, you've answered that already. Okay. What would be the the key skills that someone needs to have if right now they're thinking about creating a, a business network or a, um, a network more mm. generally speaking? What are the key skills? In your mm. mind? Key skills. Um, I wouldn't call this skills, but uh, anyway. Uh, so um, you need to answer uh, yourself, uh, tr- uh, like, if you really enjoy uh, networking. If no, maybe you need to hire somebody who will do this for you. I don't know. Uh, so uh, if it gives you enjoyment, uh, for example, after networking, in, after two hours, I will come home with like a lot of energy. Some people, they, they want to die after They this. get drained, yeah. So, yeah, this. Um, uh, then uh, you need to think uh, wisely how much time you're ready to invest in this. So when I joined the club, I decided that um, I can invest 10, 15 hours maximum. Then um, uh, I talked actually with uh, my business manager in the club when I used to be a member and asked, okay, I have 15 hours. Can you tell me? Uh, if you were me, how you would invest this time? Uh, yeah. So she told me, okay, half of time you can visit uh, meetups. We, uh, in Kiev, we had around 20 meetups per month. So I cannot visit all of them. So I was choosing for myself that once uh, what are more relevant. And then another half of time, um, I, uh, I did one-to-ones uh, with club members. So basically, I gave uh, a list of uh, um, needs to my business manager in the club and told, okay, this month I want to meet five people, for example, who uh, has agencies. Um, like uh, They can have any agency, uh, but they scale their business t- ten, s- 10 times more than I, ha- I did. So that's how you use the, yeah. the, the club in the first place. That's interesting. Absolutely. Or this time I want to find subcontractors in this field. Can you provide me with a list? So, so she gave me basically 10, 15 people. I was choosing like uh, three or five for myself. And I did either coffee or uh, Zooms. It was best thing like, ever to do. So one big skill is to know what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then again, if tomorrow I want to start my own network business or not, what's the, the cause there are two aspects. One is people. Mm-hmm. And the other one is organizing. That's what you're saying. You know, mm-hmm. There is a lot of events to organize. There is a lot of behind the scene kind of work. Um, do you need to be very good at people and organization? Or can you be very good at people and work with someone who doesn't necessarily like people, but is good at organization? How do you manage to, to figure out the, the mix between both? If you go to in communication with people, but you bet in building structure and system in your company, uh, you can uh, hire somebody like a, a chief operation officer, uh, the person who can create the system for you, uh, write the instructions for everybody. It's, it's not very expensive, actually. Uh, but the first thing is still that you have to be good with community and, and enjoy people. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I know many, um, there are another option, Actually, I didn't think about this before. 
uh, in uh, Young Business Club, we have investors. And they, they didn't want to create their, um, like to be um, the face of the community and to do operations. Uh, they, they, they just unite their money uh, uh, and told, okay, I, I want to have in my community these and these people. Uh, they agreed about this. Uh, and they found other partners uh, who enjoy uh, doing, uh, uh, creating community like me. So it's also the way uh, these investors, they're just visiting the club with the uh, people who they wanted to have in the club. Also nice way. So there is the skill of being good with people. There is the skill of being good with organizing. Yes. There is the skill of being good with staying at the back. But yes. Paying but what has to be paid and yeah. then using the system in, in a way you actually need to do it. Mm -hmm. You uh, answered one of my the, the questions I had in mind when we prepared this. You said people is energy, and I I was you know being cheeky when I was preparing that in my mind and I was saying, okay, does Irina mean people give her energy, or does she mean people are draining her energy? Ah, you know? okay. Uh, I have the answer, but. Yeah, actually, I think we exchange it. Like, I don't know how it works, but I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that I can, uh, um, to, I can fulfill people with energy. Uh, and I, I, like, it's really you have changing. That, you have that vibe. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how about feedback? When you're in a circle, when you're in an environment, when you organize uh, meetings, uh, events... Things can go very right, but sometimes things are going to go wrong for mm -hmm. someone. Something doesn't work and they're upset with it. And so I'm pretty sure you get some feedback, yeah, positive, absolutely. negative. How do you deal with feedback? How do you, in your mind, um, take it? What do you do with it? How do you work on not taking it personally? Or how do you, how do you work with feedback? Uh, for me, it's not... Uh, possible not to take it personally because uh, I created the club and it's it's my um, baby, so it's always personally. But the, the question is what I do after this. Um, uh, in every business, uh, I'm absolutely sure that uh, you need to add in your business processes um, how you take feedback, how often, uh, in what way you use um, in our club, uh, several times per uh, period of membership, I meet members uh, and ask them uh, what they liked uh, but and also what they didn't like and what we need to, uh, to improve. And if I hear that, for example, um, uh, many people told me that, okay, um, sometimes we do meetings in restaurants and it's kind of noisy there. Uh, if I heard this three or four times, I'm absolutely sure that I need to change this and we need to have a closed room, like separated room. So I love feedbacks and I love when they are bad. It means that I can uh, improve what I do and uh, have better business, like uh, better give better service to, to the clients. Are there any feedback that you received that really changed the way you did something? Something um, big? Completely... I don't think so. No, for example, I used to think that, um, yeah, mm, not compl So I used to think that uh, business owners would prefer half, half, I mean, half uh, meetups, um, educational meetups at half networking. 90% of people, when I ask uh, what do you prefer, they prefer networking than business education. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was, maybe because I love, uh, like, uh, workshops, and really 90% of business owners prefer networking. But maybe that's because you were saying you were coming from um, a world uh, before that that was about uh, building corporate events uh, for the HR and some workshopping and all that. So that's a good point. It means that you would tend to build your network, your club, based on what you've been doing and what you yeah. think, and you can't know until you ask. If you don't ask... You don't know. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, actually, even uh, when you have a company, you have 100 employees or, I don't know, 1,000, it's c the community as well. And if you will not ask them, it will be 
not okay, really. I still have this business. Uh, we, we do these researches. We ask uh, uh, human resources managers to ask the, their employees. What are the, the mistakes that people should avoid? So again, someone is thinking, I want to build a new network. It's going to be great. Okay. Okay, just, just make sure with one simple advice, help them save a year. What is the mistake they have to avoid? Uh, a mistake what they have to avoid. I would recommend decide how much time and money they are ready to invest uh, to try. Because uh, sometimes we invest, I don't know, like 3,000, 50,000, uh, and uh, it's, we're very sad after losing them or invest one year. And like, so you need to um, make the decision uh, when is the deadline, you know? So, um, because some... Uh, so some, some stage where yeah, you yeah. have to decide that you're going to cut your losses? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so, uh, b because b we're all patient about what we do. Uh, no, not all, but many of us. Uh, and, uh, uh, um, like, the biggest mistake is not to see this clearly, like, uh, that maybe uh, nine of ten startups, that they don't... Uh, they're not, gonna they're not successful. So, yeah. And so it means that if you think like that, you can either decide that, it's still worth trying, so we keep trying, or yeah. it's not worth trying, we do something else, or maybe we pivot and yeah. we, we change. But uh, so the, the, the advice is don't just do it, just as you were saying earlier, do it smart and, uh, and, yeah, and absolutely. give it some thought. And also, always uh, uh, do your math, check uh, your PNL. Always, many people they do it often, like I do it every month. Every m I uh, discuss uh, what uh, expenses I can cut. I can have more money, maybe I can add something. Like, uh, we always discuss this. It's like the agenda of monthly meeting. So if we summarize all that, let's wrap up. Someone who wants to scale, let's, let's start with the, bit, the, bit, the basic. Someone who wants to build a network, a business network, a charity network, whatever type okay. of network, and then they want to build it and then scale it. The key lessons here are have an entrepreneurial mind, be ready to solve problems, enjoy people. Yes. If you don't like people, do something else. Um, be ready to build systems, do the math, check the market. Yes. Um, people is energy. If people, again, drain your energy, do something else. Second time, I'm repeating myself, but it looks important. <laughs> but it's very important. It looks important. And take feedback. Is there anything else? Oh, I would add, take care a lot about your team. Because they, they build your business, they, they scale your business. You build, but they scale. You said something like that when we, we were working on that. You were saying that um, scaling uh, was a question of building teams and then training them and taking care of them. That's an important point. Absolutely. Because sometimes they have uh, like even private problems and you don't know this uh, and they cannot communicate with members like in a nice mood and you need to deal with this. Only you, nobody else. So it's all about people. Absolutely. All right. So that's a lot to chew on if you're working on building a network again. Um, we just made you save about a year or two. So thank you very much, <laughs> Irina, for your time and expertise. Thank see you, you in, uh, in another one, maybe? Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. And see you guys in the next episode. You know what to do. Click like, comment and all that. And see you next time. Cheers. <laughs> Bye.